Well, for the record, Flashpoint take it 3-0, and I don't think anyone's surprised here. I'm still pretty here on the desk. Joining me now for this next region is going to be David Dolson. Olson, we're hyped here. We're ready to yeah, go, yeah. guys. Last day of the console league for Phase 2. This is the last day of every week this week. Make sure you're going to stay tuning in. We're going to have content all week long. One little break, and we're going to get into the placement matches. I'm pretty excited for it. That's a great final showing from Flashpoint Agreed. as well. That's the type of performance I'm looking for from all of our number one seeds today. I can't imagine Cyclone's performance is going to be too far Hopefully off from not. that. Um, not. You know, they've been in, in a very similar vein to how dominant um, Flashpoint have been in their region. Cyclone has been kind of the same. A little bit less convincing, 9-2 and standings-wise. The only contingency is they're going up against Absolute Rain, who yeah. came in a little bit later. Remember, there was some shifting team-wise. Yeah. Uh, but technically, our, our fourth seed here, one and six, is where they stand. You know, this is one, actually, this is one where, where I think Cyclone, you know, need to, I, I think, win it very convincingly to Absolutely. kind of have a good final showing moving into that console wars bracket. This is important that over a, a very beatable team, some, someone they've beaten, I think, every time they've played them, that it's a convincing performance. You saw what Flashpoint were just able to do against Aaron Monner, the number two seed in their respective region, right. and albeit a team that has been able to give them some trouble in the past. Mm -hmm. So against the four seed, we're looking for you know complete scorched earth annihilation <laughs> here from Cyclone yep. GG, and I expect nothing less. Maybe even a little bit of a fun composition. A lot of triple tank from Flashpoint. That's true. We'll keep an eye out for that here as we head through the maps and get into this best of five. Cyclone GG sitting nine and two, Absolute Rain sitting one and six you're expecting the cyclone win today frog isle stone keep fish market and bizarre all banned out now it's time for that map selection here xbox eu it's been a fun region to watch because every other region has this like overlord they have their Red. flashpoint their hype unit their fatal ambition they have you know a very established team xbox had that in a, a team called vexed gaming yeah, uh, but sort of lost it. So it's been a very competitive region, I think, because of that. Right, yep. you're seeing nine, two, seven, four, five, six. I mean, there's three teams in this region gunning for the top spot. So look out for them to kind of continue to be one of the more competitive ones, and overall one of the more fun regions to watch this phase. Ice Mines is the first map. Bands being locked in now as Grok, Vivian, Talus, and Drum Roll for the Atlas. It's it's an interesting meta in the console that. Champion you know, it's always been the Atlas banned shoes. out, and then no, McCullough's, no, I think, it let through all the time. virtually every single game. Um, and, you know, I, I'm interested, and, and if you look kind of past this matchup, pa past Console Wars, into that qualifier bracket, with PC, it's been such a, you either you need to course. ban McCullough and Atlas or guarantee yeah. that you're going to get one goals. or the other. So... The adaptation there is something that I'm interested to see if, if you know, maybe console feels comfortable against it. Victor is, you know, a big boon to their cause against the Makoa. But even you see here, right. teams are okay letting it slip to Time fifth, to sixth, seventh win. pick. It, yeah. So I, I'm intrigued in the future to kind of see how that dynamic that changes when these console you, teams end up running into some of the PC teams. Yeah, I think it comes down to the hook is... Technically, a projectile that needs yes. to be led, and it's it's kind of flick heavy, sure. and that doesn't bode super well for the gamepad. Um, but you see, kind of the way Flashpoint yeah, play yeah. it, they just they barrel stuff you, man. Mm -hmm. They make it, <laughs> they play at unmissable ranges. It's true. And Together, essentially, what you get out of that is is still some value. You're guaranteeing the follow up shot after it. Um, you're still getting and playing off of a very reliable stun. Mm -hmm. So. Not going to be the case here this time. I don't do not think Absolute Rain could pick up the Makoa here, but it will be the Ash instead. Cyclone already Cyclone have their tank could. The It could pick up a Makoa, do triple tank. We, we have seen that on Ice Mines. Strix, tons of damage. I think this is smart, kind of pivot back into the Tyra. Prosper Logic played a Tyra into the into triple tank composition, yeah. to be fair. Watching. Uh, but I rushing, think that the, the, the Astral Mark onto a Strix, on. I mean, if you're plugging shots onto the Grover, Willow, or yeah. Victor, an Absolute Rain are going to have a very hard time kind of sustaining through a lot of that burst damage. Tyra has a little bit as well. Firebombs to control space. I like Cyclone's Draft. All righty, another Ice Mines game for you folks. We're going to get down to the casters and get it started. It's fun and the Chris coming at you live from Ice Mines. Game one, baby. We're in it. You stole that from Finch. I did. 
You That's did. true. I did. I'm not. I'm not letting you take credit. Oh, for that. come that on, man. Well, I wasn't taking credit. I was. I was going to mention that Fitch was the one that did it. But I thought it was a cool intro. Yeah, I'll take it. it. Was, yeah, it was. Pretty, it was pretty nice. Ice yeah. mines though. Yeah, we are heading into ice mines with. I, I don't think it's a bad draft on both. I think it's a decent draft on both sides, assuming that he does not stay architectonics. <laughs> that would that would change things dramatically. I mean, they already jumped out. Is he? But Strix, is he Tyra, Strix Tyra is a pretty solid combination, I think, damage wise. And oh, Ooh, what? That that's the opposite reaction I, I'm having. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's my surprise. The head, I mean, the headshot potential maybe if you're against a Makoa could be pretty decent, but just having effectively lower damage. <laughs> Uh, potentially less consistent. It, 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 yep. It's tough, but we'll have to see how absolute rank can hold this. No one has touched the objective quite yet, but Whitey's zoning them out pretty hard in the window, making a decent amount of space for his team, but they're the ones losing the point. Yeah, Fernando's actually going to be able to get the first few percentages on the point. Good kill from Wildcard, though, being able to look at multiple angles at once. That zone gets dropped, but a little bit behind Fanatics. He's going to have to move around. I mean, that Victor, not Victor, that Strix, has just been opening up fire, just trying to keep the pressure going. And for has been able to stay on point, but a good kill, nevertheless, from Fluxy right there. Forcing them out here. Sarful's going to zone this choke point. With the damage back up here from Fluxy, they could potentially get this kill. Luke, oh. I believe, actually, oh, off, whoa. I believe actually he might be off rolling. Luke, normally the support here. Shifting over to Nando for this round. Great nade. Forces people back quite a bit and just kind of zoned in this corner. Absolute range, 60% on the objective. Still climbing too. Sorrowful might go down, but with getting away, this is a solid defense for them. Yeah, 78% for him too. The Cyclone's 27. I mean, they're definitely taking their time to be able to try and get back. Fernando's going to dash on point though. Flux is in too good of a spot. He's able to at least open the door for Fernando to be able to take more and more damage. The Nanax forces him out of that spot, though. Two time in space is actually going to be able to pick up a kill on the Ash. Then oh, here come all the kills in favor of Cyclone. They're actually just pretty much wiping him at this point. They're going to get rid of the Grover as well. And man, oh man, what looked like it was going to be a lost fight for Cyclone just literally turned it completely on its head. I can't believe that Barrack is top damaging. Yeah, with Architectonics. With one point, by the way. <laughs> One point of damage above the victor currently, and now cycling. That was a really quick turn from them. They might be able to flip this around. Dismount on the barrack. I don't think there's any way for them to come in. Play flight, just zoning a little bit. But all they've really done is split Yui from the team. Maybe they can get the pick on him and turn this around, and they will. Now moving forward, but Geno's going down. being barely block. saved the last second by Luke. Yeah, I mean, he's still going to go down, but that was still a good block. Good awareness from him. Be able to pretty much turn it around immediately and try to keep him alive just for a little bit longer, but that's not going to be the case. I mean, you have two ultimates up for Cyclone, almost three for him, and you got four for Absolute Rain in response to that. The Assert Dominance is there, too. They're going to be able to pick off Tyra. That's going to be pretty big, and it's going to allow them a pretty aggressive zone, knocking Fernando all the way back and just knocking them off of that high ground. That's going to be pretty big as well because he knocks Fernando right in the barrack. Yeah, and Merrick's still kind of holding the short angle here, but has to back up. We actually see an assert dominance. It looks like it did, and it comes out onto the back line. Now alive, pulling everybody away, just taunting in the middle of it. Just to look at the fire. Now the bash coming in to zone them out just a little bit with that assert dominance going away. Whitey's going to go down, and Cyclone are going to be able to set things back up and repush. Oh, nice. Okay, the overpower actually tries to come through. But it's not going to find its mark. It's going to hit the shield. But it is going to force absolute rain. A couple others back because they've already lost the ash. A minute 20 still left. The barrage, but no one's actually in line of sight. He's looking for a target, but I don't think he's going to be able to find one. I mean, even if you don't use it, that's a 60% refund right. you're getting back. That That's exactly what you'd want at that point. We'll have to see if anybody pushes down the tunnel. I don't think anyone's really watching. It looks like Ash is now. Through time oh. comes in and takes down Sorrowful. He actually tries to flutter out. He does make it out, but can't say the same for Barrick. He's going to get picked off. The crossfire comes through, and Scarcity is going to find himself a triple kill. Whitey is going to take care of the Strix. He's all the way in the back, or at least in the back line. But he's still like, I guess that would they sort know. of be a stagger. No, no, no. What, what, no, I'm saying that I guess that would sort of be a stagger for him. It's harder for him to be able to get back mm -hmm. to try and fight with this team at this point. If he had waited, he might have been able to fight this Strix, but looks like he's ignoring him. Doesn't realize the Strix is there. He gets marked and pushed, so this could be tough for Yui, especially with that one bash one. not connecting. The damage coming from the Strix is just so high, but yeah. with that mark, actually, he might be able to oh, he might be able to lose that. He, oh, gosh. he went around the shield, but barely one of the last moment. Shout out to Kings giving the mark to Yui to keep him going. Absolute rain, though, with that distraction, they're able to kind of rehold this defense here. Tyra Lowe has to drop back, but right now it's just a stalemate back and forth. Yeah, 10 seconds. Still available on the clock. You have the flashbang, you've got the overpower, and you've got three ultimates still on absolute rain side. It's a matter of them just trying to be able to fight, get this pressure going, 
and keep pushing the card if they're going to be able to really cap this one. That's one gets dropped, though, in a very good spot. It's going to force uh, it's going to force the Strix out and off of the high ground. They're going to take care of that Genos. They got rid of him. Now that's their healer gone. Fernando has no one to be able to follow up to try and give him that healing, and they're not going to be able to push this one in. I like how I like how he's playing Strix in some of these in these corners. He kind of switches from Strix to Scott. Yeah. He just walks up close with his pistol out and goes for it there. And also, Immortal Crossfire is a pretty solid combo that I expect to see coming out a lot more from Cyclone on this map. One of the weaknesses of Crossfire is that it doesn't give you any immunity. The only thing you really gain from it is that movement speed that you can use to, to push or run away with it sometimes. Combining it with the Immortal from the Nando, from Luke, being able to just go straight in with it and take advantage of all the damage that you're doing, that's definitely one of their key combos. Because otherwise, they really don't have any. More or less. I mean, they have alts that are decent on their Five, own through time and space. Four, can connect if you catch three, support or two, any DPS after their one. movement ability. Overpower. It's overpower. It's probably the best ultimate in the game, arguably. So they have some other options there, but to make those two ultimates work, I think they're going to have to connect together. Yeah, 81% already for scarcity in terms of his ultimate charge. You got a 1 to 1 score. Or, or, I mean, you got a 1 to 1 score, so the game definitely could still potentially have a long way to go. Everyone's just firing shots, trying to lower them, trying to make sure it's harder for them to push up. Battle shot to give himself a little bit more immunity. But the Whirlwind actually gets popped in the back. You have the overpower as well, but the Assart Dominus just goes straight. Oh my goodness. That was like a cartoon. It hits the Ooh. skybox, Whitey. Did the thing in the cartoon where you walk yeah, off the edge yeah, and, like, and then go straight, straight down? down. Yeah. Either way, through time and space, trades into the dome shield that Sorrowful tried to put down. Now King's pushing here in the window. Maybe trying to find an angle, but wild card. Cannot get the flank onto Yui and goes down. Yeah, he's trying to find that kill. There it is. There will be the kill one that he was looking for, or at least trying to spread out that damage. You're going to be able to keep an eye on him. Oh, they're going to fire at him, and they are, they are going to be able to the get him just waiting. To, yeah, they're going to be able to get the uh, get it from the Fernando. He's going to be able to get that last hit. 60% to 6 on absolute rain side. Barely touched the point. Cyclone are looking pretty good. Good Immortal to be able to not only body block, keep himself alive, and also make sure it is harder for them to be able to get back to the point. He's going to force Ash out of that certain dominance as well. And good boy, Grip. I like the use of that CC immunity and the CC to keep him from getting back to point. That's just great prioritization from Cyclone. I mean, knowing who the biggest threat's going to be. So you push to the choke, dismount the Ash, you body block her dash, you block her uh, cert dominance with your Immortal, and then you save that last CC for that last ditch effort because Luke was too low to body block. He went down in one shot. So having that second body block was really, well, the second void grip was really what sealed the deal for them. But Absolute Rain flipped it around after that. They kind of threw themselves away for the point Cyclone did. That was the right play, but it still gives Absolute Rain this aggressive zone that they're taking advantage of right now. Well, Willow is definitely trying to zone out or at least be aggressive. And aggressive she is. She flutters in, gets the kill on the Tyra. Now they're looking at Fernando. He's going to get picked off too. You got two members on their team that are already down. Cyclone are going to be the ones that are still eating most of this damage and still being zoned out. They've got the they've got the Faith Flight, they've got Whirlwind, they've got Barrage, they've got the tools they need to keep the zone going. But the question is, will Cyclone even be able to fight back to the point where they can get back to the point? Can I see this Barrack build for a second? I don't think he's running any turret health. He's not <laughs> on Architect Onyx. Zero points of, of health on turret for it to go down. I guess purely used to have the shotgun to do less damage instead of the, the tinkering slugs. Interesting failsafe now sets and lets Arful get away and save by the whirlwind. There's a lot of pressure coming in. Might be countered by this fae flight though. Oh, but they actually, Whiting was just in the back line, putting pressure on that Genos and eventually getting the kill. He's going to charge out to regroup with the rest of his team. And they're going to be able to continue this zone now with Whiting in position. And definitely going around to try and do the same thing. See if he can repeat that aggression he had before that took out their healer. He might actually assert dominance. He's in a good enough spot to do so, but he's going to drop that shield, wait a little bit longer, and pretty much just be backed up by that wall. I, I would definitely not use assert dominance here. You're already zoning them into their spawn. There's only 40 seconds left. That would basically just be like putting the eighth cherry on the sundae you're eating right now. Like, yeah, it'll probably be, it'll probably feel good when you eat that eighth cherry, you know, some sort of fruit with your ice cream, but. Definitely not what they need really right now, for sure. They're still getting zoned into their spawn. I don't think there's any way at all that Cyclone can touch at this point. But as long as they keep winning these mid fights, they have the game on lock. Absolute Rain have to figure something out on the mids that makes them look as dominant as they do on these defenses. 10 seconds left. And yeah, they're not going to be able to touch. Is why I brought it up before. But the fact is, is that is Cyclone going to be able to really fight back or at least try and find an opening in this defense? But... No, they didn't use any ultimates. They saved them, saved the Grapsalute Rain, and there it is. 
Yep, the cartoon right off the side. It was actually really close. It was. I, I think Whitey hit the skybox of the the or the hitbox of the item that's like the crane thing that's like hanging mm -hmm. out a little bit out there. That might have been what pulled him down. The skybox is very very low mm -hmm. on Ice Mine's middle, so you know potentially hitting it with Drogo's Fae Flight happens a lot. Point so spawn. not too surprised. He goes down that way. KD's. Slash lines in general looking in favor of Absolute Rain, but got to remember, they've been having these crazy aggressive defenses. Five, Definitely been four, padding three, those stats just a little two, bit. Let's we'll see what Cyclone decide to do on this mid. They have most of their ultimates. The only one not up is Flashbang. I just noticed that that Strix went veteran as well. That's kind of mm, interesting. interesting. I guess it makes yeah. sense for the when you're in stealth, you might be able to heal faster. Oh. Two time and space tries to connect on the spawners, but just barely goes wide. Yeah, I mean, now we have Barrack, though. He is already pretty low. Despite all that, they're going to be able to focus on him. The overpack actually comes through, but it's going to be the one that's going to end up missing. The assert dominance goes to the back line, but you got the immortal. They knew that he was going to use it. Popped it a little bit early, but they're stuck in this corner right here. They got rid of Tyra. Now the assert dominance are going to be able to keep this positioning, hold this zone that they have going on. 15% for absolute rain. The score is tied 2-2, two to two, but you get rid of the Willow. That might be your opening. Ash might be there as well. The commander's grab. He drops the shield, but he's going to get thrown back behind it. The dome shield to continue this zone. They don't want to let him anymore for it, but their teammates are still dying. They're losing the rest of the fights. That dome shield was just used to zone them out. If they had been winning, it could have snowballed, but they were losing it in that moment. Sarvel has to leave now, but the firebomb catches him on the way out. Yeah, I mean, scarcity, man. He's able to push up along with the Natics. Now you see pretty much the only two that are pushing up are the frontliners. My goodness, the commander's grab to actually go in. Might be a little bit too overzealous, 25. but good shielding from the Fernando to keep him alive. They actually play that really, really aggressive. Body blocks just barely around the corner just to stop that Ash from going in. 78% and absolute rain. Don't know if they'll be able to come back, but a good overpower. They're going to be able to take care of Willow, but not before Strix goes down. 96% to 60. You got the barrage, but you got two kills already for scarcity. Great positioning by him to crossfire into the barn to stay alive. A nice. third kill for him. Game says double kill. That is just a little bit off. Scarcity just gets an amazing performance on this mid, and the Natic steals away what could have been his Penta. Delayed Penta, but still. Cyclone, another win on mid, and Absolute Rain have to figure something out. Uh, their ultimates, some of them didn't really connect the way they should have. I thought that Barrage was solid, the Assert Dominance was solid, but like Dome Shield, that Fae Flight went down immediately after being used. Then to figure something else out, Sarva goes down again to the bottom from Scarcity. Two minutes and 15 seconds left. Victor's top damaging right now, but Tyra is close behind that. She has all of her skills up. And you have three to two score already. Slash line's not looking, well, no, they're actually looking pretty okay on both team sides. They're actually not looking bad at all. This is a pretty close game anyway. I mean, it was tied up until this very recent point capture. So, I mean, it is still going pretty good. Absolute Rain can definitely take this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, and they've been kind of resurging over time. I, I've said it before that this team has had some pretty good matchups. I mean, in general, their, their record doesn't, I think, speak for how quickly they've improved over time in this league. Absolute Rain potentially after that, those picks are going on another aggressive Aggressive defensive zone. Fae Flight not going to come out. I thought it might have there, but playing it a little safe. You are closer to the mid, so there's really not a lot of skybox to use. Super aggressive oh, yeah. play from the Ash going in. Start dominance used, but it's countered immediately by the Immortal. Yeah, I mean, he's been on point. This Fernando has been so on point with the Immortals, but you already got a good flight going. You got the flashbang that was used, but doesn't find its mark or hit anyone for that fact. A minute 10 as well. And now Absolute Rain are the ones that are pushing forward. They, they're the ones that are able to get the zone going, and they're pretty much just being entered right now. The Natix and Yui, he's going to go down. The Strix is going to be taken care of. The Natix looks like he's going to be next, or at least he's going to be pushed back. Thanks to Absolute Rain's very aggressive zone. And Luke might go down as well. I mean, they're able to pretty much sit where they were before. And you've got to go shoot. I... Want to provide analysis I on that real I, quick, I, President? I, I cannot argue for that. I, okay. I'm not sure. It was maybe to keep himself alive a little bit longer, but he was full HP. Pretty four. It could also just be a fat finger. I mean, it happens. It does. Right sure. now, Whitey's zoning up the top, though, pushing back. The Strix on the low ground. Yui is stuck with low HP, and they have potential if they start moving now to touch the objective. But Geno Seals trying to get everyone topped back off. Might not be quite enough. They are mounting back in to get a little bit of room. Cyclone actually found an opening in short here. They might be able to pinch these people in oh, front, nice. but they have to start thinking about touching the objective. Fluxy goes down. The victor is done. Barrick looks like he's about to be soon, as well as the v Willow, as well as the Grover. They actually all ate a lot of damage right there. The Nats with a double scarcity with one. 
And now they're looking at Whitey, but he shorter bashes out to not only get himself to cover, but to make sure he can regroup with his team when they need him. You got overtime as a factor as well. And you've got three ultimates up for Cyclone. You've got three ultimates up for Absolute Rain. And it's just a matter of whether people are going to use them or not. They, they shouldn't use any. With right. Three, three ice mines, final point fight. You right. need them for sure. Fnatic's actually catches Fluxy, so maybe, maybe Cyclone see the opportunity to come in here, especially with Whitey going down. Now the ultimates can see use. Yeah, I mean, they are looking to be able to push this in or end it. They're able to get two kills, which is absolutely huge. The overtime is there. They got rid of the Barrack. They're looking at the Victor next. And here they are, the Fae actually comes out, but he's eating a lot of damage. He's pretty much just staying directly above the point. You've got a lot of hit scan targets and presences that are already there. The Barrage comes out too. He's got the shield up. He's looking for targets to hit, but he's just being able to hold it. The Immortal comes out as well. The Assert Dominance gets dropped down. Overtime is still a factor. You've got the battle shot to be able to heal Fernando back up, but the fight is still going. They have so much Wrecker on their team, and Luke Shield lasted an eternity. Finally, the tanks go down. That's what the Wrecker should have been doing this whole time. And Absolute Rain holds strong, but they have to use almost everything. Yeah, I mean, that's that's probably the best you can get if you're on Cyclone's side, side. I mean, you forced so many of their ultimates out, or at least enough to where they won't have them in time, I believe, for another point fight to break out. I mean, they are doing extremely well with being able to control and get these aggressions and get these point captures. It's actually kind of funny that that Dome Shield that I was we were critiquing earlier happened Points because now because seconds. he fat-fingered Dome Shield, he's going to have it for this minute at some point. Oh, okay. So I guess great job. Master Brain. <laughs> yeah, fat, I, I wouldn't have thought about it, but I guess that's just... Five. But he's there and I'm here for sure. But yeah, I was saying like <laughs> two, the shielding on one. the shielding on the Nando. He, his shield lasted so long. They have double record three and then record two on their barrack. Yeah, that's so much record. And and still, Luke was holding up that shield for a really long time. But that's gonna mean these tanks are basically oh. solely relying on their ultimates for sustain. Luke's already got used in that final fight. It's true. I mean, you have to keep driving space, try and open the door for a potential kill. But wasn't gonna find anyone. Not any damage. Not any dismounts. But you still got a zone. No one has touched the point yet. Everyone's focusing on these side fights right now. Good overpower. He's just staring right down the line of sight. He's going to actually go down. You see the Vine Grip go out. Not going to be able to catch anything, though. Luke, Fanatics, the two of them get one kill apiece, leaving two down on Absolute Rain. The third one is going to be Whitey. Because of that, you've got 12%, and the percentages are opening up for Cyclone with still a crossfire online. I think Absolute Rain might be stabbing uh -oh. themselves here. This is brutal if they go Ooh. down, and they do. The tank aggression catches Cook. both DPSs from Absolute Rain. Barbecue completely is how I would phrase that one. Fernando keeps him in there, gets a double, or at least gets two with the fireball, and is able to actually burn him down. The Nax is able to pick up the last hit on one of them, and he's able to still push forward. You got the crossfire as well. Whirlwind to try and get himself out of there. Ash is still there as well. And the Strix is also there. Genos has been sitting on the point, not really doing anything except for pretty much just heal. Here's another heal. Take I mean, that's to be expected on ice. Right, right? exactly. Right, yeah, and, yeah. and honestly, Absolute Rain, I think they had a chance to retake that, but they just gave up so much. They, they, they retook ground when they didn't need to. Pinched by the tanks, melted down. It could have, I think, been a lot closer had the DPSs properly disengaged, but Cyclone saw that they didn't and just absolutely pounced. Yeah, we're going to see in the post game what more of the story is. 125k. I mean, everyone has... Pretty big damage on Cyclone side. I mean, even the tanks, like 91k for Fernando, the 77 out for damage Tenet. Strix's Nando. <laughs> right. Like, even Strix, like, yeah, he is behind the Fernando at that point. And it's super interesting because he's taken a lot of damage, too, the most in the game at that. Yeah, and that's, that's I mean, the main tank life, right? You can right. be soaking up all that damage. Plus, also, the most shielding, too. Remember, mm -hmm. against all that record, right. kind of does make sense. And... Architectonics, unfortunately, not the play today for Absolute Rain. Pretty solid performance by the DPSs, I got to say, and I think that's why them going down in that last fight was so heartbreaking. Right. I mean, it was close throughout the entire set. I mean, it was 1-1, then it was 2-2, then it was 3-3, but because of that ultimate usage, it just wasn't enough for them to be able to try and win that last point fight. But Scarcity, 16-9-15, and 15, the second time in a row we've seen a Tyro. We're seeing her being brought out. Every now and again, we don't see it as much on the PC, but the hit scan presences on console are so important, and who better to do it than Tyra? Especially on Ice Mines. I mean, right. Burn Monster also does some crazy zoning on this map. I, I fully expect to continue to see it on this map on PC, but Scarcity really was always there to clean up. Good positioning from the crossfires, too. Like I mentioned, that one fight, being able to disengage with the speed from the crossfire to live through the barrage, that was great. That was 
some masterful tire plants in. Yeah, 125,000 damage too. Of course, nothing to scoff at. You see the fireball. <laughs> There's no way he meant to do that, right? What? That was the sickest. Ba I mean, at first he threw it, and I'm like, oh wow, he missed, and then it landed above the spawn door, so it covered the spawn. Could have been. There's big no brain. way, right? Could have been big brain. I trust him. I trust him with the fireball. I didn't do great at geometry in high school, <laughs> but I don't think anybody's figuring that out at the moment. <laughs> I mean, that's why I said Master Brain. Maybe he was just that good at doing it. He has the damage numbers to prove it, too. 125K, yeah. nothing to scoff at, and nothing to scoff at in game one. Cyclo looking clean right now. One to nothing. Right after this break, we'll see if Absolute Rain can fight back. Alienware the official PC provider of the Paladins Premier League. It's a victory for Cyclone GG there on Ice Mines, as we expected, but David is far from as clean yeah. as I think we had kind of hyped up and talked about it wanting to be. This is the yeah. number one versus the number four seeded team. You know, when you have Willow, you have victory, you have some pretty good tank buster, and maybe it's just the draft was too much to overcome. Yeah, I mean, I I handed the draft to, to Cyclone with what they had, and, you know, I still I, I still am confident in it. I think the problem is, is there was extra... Yeah kind of cyclone bias going into the way I felt about that draft I, it was more understandably so it was more you know the draft is somewhat even but but I, I think they're going to play it a little bit better I think that absolute rain did a, a good job of kind of mitigating that Strix impact throughout the game Definitely. I mean there were there were moments where the Strix really popped off in some fights but a lot of what I loved about cyclones draft was the ability to just blow up some of those squishies and it didn't happen consistently enough. So a great show. I mean, Cyclone gets yeah. the win, but I think Absolute Rain had a good showing there. Let's see if they can keep it up, folks. Let's head to the map screen for map number two here. Both these map, both these teams get a guaranteed map selection. And with that, Bright Marsh will be up next. I believe this okay. is Cyclone's map. So hoping for uh, a little bit more of a dominant showing on this one. It's been nothing but triple tanks today. It's been That's what a, I was thinking. a little surprising. I don't know why all of a sudden that's just really started to pop off. But we'll keep a close eye on it. Bright Marsh does lend itself to that, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't say it'd be out of the ordinary. Uh, but just in my memory of Phase 2, and even Phase 1, I don't really have an overwhelming yeah. uh, you know, sense of triple tank was what people were playing. Really not much of that. No, and I think you bring it up. I think Bright Marsh is a map where something like that could it work. Yet. We're starting off with some good potential there. I mean, you, you kind of yeah, need buddy. that that off tank, the, somebody to just do a little bit of that extra gap damage that you're missing if you're gonna run a triple tank composition so if nothing else cyclone have started off with something well absolute rain are gonna lock in the drogos i like the i like the drogos i mean it kind of leaves things open if it's a triple tank dragon punch good for an execute lots of kind of health pool disparity there you can knock out a big health pool even if yeah. you die uh so lots to look at there and then the leon for some good confirmed damage as well on good against Drogo, so nice to pair those up. You don't have to worry too much about it. Another tank and a Grover definitely yeah. smells like triple front line. That is the premier healer to have. And maybe the dead giveaway will follow along with the rest of the Cyclone draft. Lots of front lines open. Makoa and Ara. <laughs> Khan and Ruck is about to get scooped up here by Absolute Ring Gaming. A much more aggressive, mm -hmm. offensive style of composition here uh, from ARG. I think it's good. You know, I, they probably want Khan and Ruckus anyway. Yeah. But with the threat of Triple Tank kind of hanging around, I think Cyclone probably would have gone for the Khan if it were still available, if they wanted to go Triple yeah. Tank. 
Uh, so I think Absolute Rain, good picks there for themselves as well as maybe limiting Cyclone to what they can pick. They're going to go for the Strix and the Tyra again. Okay. Tyra, I think, fine on Bright Marsh. Strix is always a conversation to be had. It's a very sightline dependent champion, of course. And yeah. Not even so much on like the super long ranges. We see him kind of played in these mid ranges nowadays anyway. Um, you know, I think it kind of hinges on that again. I, I think if the Strix is hitting its mark, it's going to limit the Drogo so he can outduel the Leon, depending on if there's some follow up damage. Maybe it's Cyclone bias again, but I'm still feeling good about him. All righty, guys, let's get it down to Bright Marsh and see what Cyclone got for us. Yeah, I agree. I want to see what they got when they're bringing out this Atlas, especially. He actually got through. And they have him on his team this time. Yeah. Which and is it, surprising. Yeah, and Atlas just, especially piloted by Fanatics, I think has been yeah. super impactful for Cyclone. Definitely expected to be just as impactful here, but not necessarily paired with a super aggressive DPS they could bring. I'm assuming, I don't even know who would go on that side. Both of those DPSs that Cyclone have, to me, scream, we're going to shoot a point. So either Cyclone's going to play a defensive style and use that Atlas more for control with the rewinds. Rewind being especially lethal against that Ruckus. Or they're going to just go aggressive with the Tyro, walk straight in, but Rune Monster for me kind of says otherwise. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be hard, especially for Ruckus. I mean, a con for sure. If you use that Burn Monster, it's going to be really, really well, prominent. And Luke is on the, the take again, right? We were talking a little bit about that beforehand, yes. about... How well you so can yeah, explain. I, I, I yeah. confirmed that. Yeah, well, I, I confirmed. I double checked to see if it was cool to talk about, but Cyclone will not have kings at land, and Luke is most likely going to be the one flexing around on their team. So this is kind of them figuring out either where he's going to be best suited, or depending on who they get to fill the spot that of kings is absent. Uh, Luke will probably have to play any number of roles. So that's why we're kind of seeing the flex of kings on support, Luke on the tank. But might see it be different come time for HRX qualifiers. Only yeah. time will tell. Yeah, only really time can, but good first blood, ready for absolute rain, but look at the percentage, though. I mean, you've already got not only the aggression that you need, but you've gotten a kill, you've gotten the percentages. You just use the rewind, too. I mean, he heals right back up to full. I mean, and he alone is zoning out several members of absolute rain. Yeah, that's, that's Atlas. Atlas. That's yeah. Atlas for you. Just it, Once you have these cooldowns mastered, it's such an impactful champion. So much space gained from this pressure. Scarcely. Great angle here, actually. If he can. Oh, that's, it. that's oh, a little ooh. further than I was expecting him to take <laughs> it, but I would be just as surprised if I was at Drogos, too. And now Luke here pushing the cart. Team kind of zoning up. Better, better. When you have a Grover, you definitely want your Grover being the one moving up for the zone to keep your team healed, depending on how close it is. And that's great pressure on this side, too. Stasis feels keeping him alive for a little bit longer. Absolute rain. You need to find an answer for this Atlas fast. Yeah, I mean, that Ruckus is eating a lot of damage, too. The Natics are just going to be able to rewind. Yeah, don't mind if I full heal. Yeah, <laughs> just gonna go really bad. Oh man, he tried to slide past it, but got shot. He got popped immediately after trying to move out of the way of that shot. Unfortunate. A minute and fifty still available. You've got whirlwind flashbang. You've got crossfire. You almost have exile. You almost have dome shield. And it looks like they almost got themselves around, especially when you pull out three. Scratch that. Four kills just like that. I. What else is there to say? When your team's applying that much pressure, that's when Crossfire is going to be the freest and walking yeah. straight like that. He might die in the firebomb. Flux, he's caught in the corner. The bomb doesn't spread to him when he manages to live, but the setback pulls the ruckus away too. So absolutely no contest whatsoever coming out from Absolute Rain. And only one kill. And that was on Scarcity. And we thought that might turn the fight, but Fnatic slipped it around right after. Yeah, I mean, this is them definitely in the prime right now. At least in terms of this round. 2-0, 3-0. 0-0-7, zero, 1-0, zero, oh, scarcity inting with a good 2-1, but at the same time, it's still pretty good. Seconds. And that was only off that, that one, I think, really good rocket from Wildcard. And I think the DPSs are, are definitely, to me, feel like the stars mm, yeah. for Absolute Rain the more they play. I think Tapsy plays, ah, plays very well as well, but I think four, the tanks might need to play three, more in a way that two, enables them, and I'm one. not sure if this is really the tank combination to do it. I think you right. need that strong objective contest so that the focus of the team can kind of be split two ways, as opposed to this kind of pokey divey comp that I feel like doesn't give your DPS is what they really need, but this run-in from Sarvel might be what they need here. We'll see what he gets from it. He actually tried to use the overpower, but it actually whiffs. He uses Hexafire. He gets brought down. Whitey, wild card, two of them gone. And the good rewind as well. Battleshout stuck in Battleshout. And great, great rewind. Good, even better firebomb. I mean, it's it's so hard to be able to stop this. I mean, what 
can you do in this scenario? Like, what would you have to do, Crescent, to be able to find your opening, find your pressure? Because it's so hard for them to be able to touch a point. This is the second time in a row where they haven't touched. I think this is just kind of part of their composition. It's going to be so tough for them to break through. Second Exile missed, and actually, great time by Fluxy to find a kill in the back, but no one else is able to touch the point. Uh -oh. Now, Fanatics is in a bad way, but I don't think they even oh, knew he was wow. behind them. He might be able to get away. We might actually be able to do that. I thought I was thought he was gonna actually get the kill on the Fluxy. They do get the kill on the Grover though. That's their healer already gone. Why he's gonna go down as well. Rockets are coming out from Drogos. He's gonna try and fire Fanatics. He is gonna be able to get the damage, but Sarfle's gonna get the last hit. Tabsy's gonna get the last hit on Luke as well. Got rid of both their frontliners. Now you pretty much just gotta wait, but they've got two minutes left on the clock. They've got plenty of time, literally all the time, at least in this round, to be able to fight back and push and potentially just 4-0 on it. Great angle by Scarcity there. And aggressive oh, potentially nice. crossfire from Yui, but it doesn't get too much. Dragon Punch now to stand the tide, but what's he gonna find? Oh, he's gonna be able to find Luke. That's what he's gonna be able to do, but he lands in the firebomb. King is gonna be able to finish that kill off, but you lost most of your teammates at that point. I mean, you have to still be mindful of that situation. It's so a lot of ammo. Yeah, it's it a lot of ammo in that Leon. I think that's that's superiority three adding on to the eight shots already in the rifle. Eleven bullets. Yep, superiority three in the build. Actually the dash we don't see the dash distance really as much. Most people tend to focus on like the survivability and everything, but let's see Fluxy kind of focusing on that movement, the rotation potential. Good overpower to next and they do manage to find fanatics. They need to find something else if they want to keep this aggression going. Yeah he's gonna be able to look at loot now but he's gonna be able to get healed at least a little bit, tiny fraction of a bit for, uh, by Grover. They're going to be able to take care of the Ruckus. That's going to be pretty big. I mean, the Firebomb gets thrown out. Pretty much just carpets it, makes it impo almost impossible. Well, literally impossible for him to be able to dash out. And now we have Luke's on the side, man, landing those shots. It's I so mean, refreshing seeing 560 again. Yeah. I'll oh, yeah, after Arc Tectonics. Yeah. <laughs> That's understandable, but... What's less understandable is how they're going to be able to fight back. I mean, 35 seconds, you just got three kills on Cyclone side. Not only are you feeling good, but you're looking at ending the game 4-0, sub 10 minutes potentially. Sub 7, depending on how forward they, yeah. they get this, this cart. Right now it's turning that corner and they're gonna need Barrett to replace on it. And actually, Tabs is stuck in the low ground, so this could be a potential starter pick for them. But Wildcard tries to go in and make a play, but it's not enough. He goes down immediately. Luke is gonna be able to take care of him, the Kamehameha, but it's not gonna hit. It is actually gonna hit, but it's not gonna be able to kill anyone. Excuse me. Luxie is going to get that kill on the Grover. But with how aggressive they're being, how many kills it is they've actually followed up, that's a team wipe. That's gonna be unable, it's gonna be unable or at least impossible for Absolute Rain to touch because Cyclone just won the second game. They even had the Exile at the end, so if they had someone going in, I mean, maybe if they dashed off right before it hit, they could have had a chance, right. but then I just had a great angle into spawn. Could have caught them before that movement was used. Or if it was, it probably would have just smacked into the tree right. and then not been able to contest anyway. So great by Cyclone again, kind of on the back of that, of that off tank play opening up so much room on the side, even after they lost the first pick, the pressure from Atlas. I mean, we can see why it's always paired with Talos right. in the band column. Yeah, I mean, we're going to see the post game as well, see more, a little bit more of the story and just talk about, break it down, see what's going on. The next actually not damaging. I mean, I mean he's close to the DPSs, but I mean, he, he it, the pressure he was able to create just off the damage that he has alone was more than enough to be able to create so much space. I mean, I brought it up before. He was like zoning off like three people just on the side. Yeah. He was low. He rewinded, and he was still able to just sit there. Again, there's no stat that says space made. Right. Well, I mean, he made seven space that game. Yeah. That would oh, be seven that units, would be sick. But sometimes you just have to watch the play to tell the impact. I will say though, I think the DPS is an absolute rain. Still put up a pretty decent yeah. performance, but very very tough for wild card into that composition for sure. Atlas, Atlas, Strix, and Tyra all into a Drogo's. I mean, he did a respectable amount of damage, but sometimes it's just too much to play through. Yeah, I mean, that's really, really difficult to try and break the lines of that. I mean, we saw it. I don't even know if they were able to even touch the point. I don't even think that that was the thing they were able to. Well, okay, no, that's actually going to prove me wrong right there. It is actually percent They were able to get a little bit, but still, I mean, Cyclone just with their pressure was more than enough to be able to handle just so much. And this is why it's hard for Drogo. You see it right there. Alice is opening, opening fire, and if he doesn't hit it, you've got Strix and Tyro to be able to follow up, too. Scarcity took so much space. How yeah. They were just diving Scarcity, and then <laughs> they just cleaned up off of it. And you can see the amount of pressure he was applying on this Atlas. 900 damage every time you click or pull the trigger on the console. It's very, very overwhelming sometimes, it especially is. on a tank that basically has two health bars. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it before on... 
I mean, on, even on PC too, I mean, just the damage it is that Alex is able to bring out, the yeah. CC he has, the space he's able to create, it's just a little bit too much for Absolute Rain to be able to fight back and at least try and take this game. But it's only 2-0. Absolute Rain could end up reverse sweeping, but we can only see how that game will turn out after this break. The Paladins Console League is brought to you by Evil Mojo Games, developers of Paladins. more like it cyclone gg putting their foot down on bright marsh and winning that map in about eight minutes really solid gameplay from them especially considering they do finally get atlas first atlas mm -hmm. of the day after five games of play has that incredible impact you're starting to see why he's the power tank on not yep. only the console but pc as well a character that can be effective on any platform and thanatex shows us why yeah, the uh, I, I agree with how you kind of brought us in. That's more like it. That's what you expected yeah. out of Cyclone in this matchup. I mean, six and some change minute Bright Marsh game is, I think, about par where, where my expectations right. were, to be honest. I think, again, Absolute Rain had some moments where you know, it looked like they were going to be competitive, kind of keep themselves in it. Too much power from Cyclone, too much to mitigate that Drogos, Atlas, Strix, yeah. Tyra, as Kresnik pointed out. A great draft from Cyclone, great game, and that's back to par. Yes, sir. One more game to close this set out, potentially. Cyclone will not have the map selection, though. This is loser's pick, so we're headed to wherever Absolute Rain want to go, and that's Timber Mill. Hopefully, okay. we're going to slow this one down a little bit. I think you, when you look at Timber Mill, you see... The long lines of sights and just mm -hmm. a long geographical map. It takes mathematically a lot longer to push here. But it's not to say that, like, it is difficult to convert on Timber Mill. You right. know what I mean? The spawn is... I would venture to say the spawn on Timber Mill is farther from the conversion point than mm -hmm. probably any other map almost in the game. It's, it's yeah. one of... And if that wasn't enough, right... You're pushing out into the offense having high ground. That is, I can say, yeah. the only map where that's really the case. And it's something that is tough. Like, you know, once you get knocked onto the back foot on Timber Mill, you're probably getting converted on. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of right up there with, like, your Bazaar and maybe some Shattered Desert, but definitely a big difference in the high ground. Yeah, yeah. Right now. Uh, so that that's definitely, Ooh. you know, you're respawning, you're right there. We'll McCullough Atlas. So started. we have seen this combination a couple of times. Yeah. To honestly, some mixed results. They're they're, they're banned out so heavily. They're they're so strong in their own right. But a lot of times, they kind of want to fill that same role, which I yeah. think is tough. It is you have to have that communication between full blown aggression, and you have to build the rest of your team around that kind of move forward, play aggressive. Or have kind of a, well, we're going to keep Atlas back, Makoa back. Neither of them are great as point hmm. tanks, to be honest yeah. with you. Uh, so this, this is, is a team. Dave. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Atlas, if nothing else, if you're looking at Timber Mill, he's got some, some good range with his fully charged shots. Yeah. But you need to be hitting your fully charged shots from range. Makoa, you know, get down here with your hook. I think they both you have their viability. They're going to go quad front line i think you still grover here if you're uh yeah. absolute rain i think you need to i think i think grover is the only good, thing that yeah. could it's not ideal for your comp but it right. is a huge takeaway from Cyclone. i think it's the only thing i mean the, you know any healer is obviously going to sustain your team but quad front i expect massive healing number if they're able to grab the grover i expect huge healing numbers well maybe they're just 
planning on relying on or leaning on Willow heavily enough to I shut mean, it down. Willow, right? It's on paper, but it, it's a long cooldown. It's unlikely that you hit every single front line. You probably yeah, hit I don't one, know. I maybe mean, two most of the time. Nice. I don't mind. I mean, so I, I, I think I agree. On, on paper, you know, Willow into Grover, great matchup. They've got good tank shred on Absolute Rain, you know, yeah. between Vivian and Strix. It's going to be a lot on that calculated aggression, I think, from Cyclone. Pull down the Strix, pick yeah. off the Strix, you, you know, yank the Vivian, whatever it is, you, you got to find a pick. I like it, though. I like the creativity. Yeah, let's see it, guys. Absolute Rain definitely have what they need to win, but can they do it often enough? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about four frontliners and then a Grover, and then you got Willow, you got Vivian, listen, you got Strix. Listen, fine. Okay, I'm listening. They're going to win Quarry. Oh, they're going to win. They're going to win on the sides of the point. I mean, sorry, sorry. I yeah, was but thinking. I mean, what about the game, though? That might be a problem. Yeah, that's what I'm it saying. It is Timber Mill. They, uh, actually, you know what? Wait, this is sick. Okay. Summit Anara. Summit Anara? Summit Anara. That, wait, what do you mean? Like Summit on Anara, the card that gives oh, you the yeah, okay, jump. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I, so I didn't what they're think gonna you do, meant that. So the Anara is going to <laughs> boost, boost herself up to high ground okay. and land on the three DPSs okay. and immediately die, and then they're going to lose. Okay. All right. All right, all right. In, in that order. That sounds like more of what I was expecting to yeah. hear in the very beginning. But... I mean, we can only see. I mean, oh, it's not Summit. Oh my God. <coughs> oh well, missed opportunity. It, it is a missed opportunity. That's that high ground take that they're gonna need. The wall actually pretty low. Does go down here, sorrowful. <coughs> kind of making so now they have half shell, so they have some point sustain, but this is gonna fall off once yeah. they get that that wrecker online on the other side. It's gonna be a pretty big problem because you don't have anyone to deal with this. You got Vivian just opening fire in the back line. The Nanix is there, gets the rewind, puts up the divider, but he steps in front of the divider, so he's going to be able to get hit anyway. 36% to 6%, literally 30% more than absolute rain. But, I mean, they are still building the percentages steadily. I mean, they can't really be aggressive. I'm just a little bit more worried, however long the game ends up going on, how, how they're going to be able to stop the, the scaling. I'm honestly, I don't know if they're going to be able to right now. The con on high ground has to back up. They have point control, but there's a lot of health to burn through on the side of Absolute Raid. They have so much work they're going to have to do. This Vivian actually gets kind of low, and the Nax might be able to catch him out. Deja Vu, but heal comes in, and wild card runs away, so no pick just yet for him. Now Scarcity might be caught in a corner by Fluxy, oh. but the Nax finds the kill. Fluxy is actually going to go down. You have the ceilings that are literally on the other side of the wall. A charge shot from Fnatic's. He's able to at least keep people pinned back just for a little bit longer. They're actually going to get rid of the Terminus. Rewinds the Vivian. Misses the shot, though, on the rewind. But King's already over there trying to follow up. 96%, 99, and you got a point capture. Nine HP on King's. Eight more than he needed. Easy for King's as he runs <laughs> away from the fight. Fnatic's chases down the kill onto Whitey, and now the cart is moving on its own. Well, with the team. So more or less over healing right now. They actually get that high ground control, but they really don't get much out of it. No, they can't do it. It's just an R up there. If they can get the Atlas up there, maybe they could find something. But for now, at least, they've taken the DPS away from that ground just above. Them. Yeah, Cauterize one. You've got two Wreckers. I mean, you definitely have what you need on Absolute Rain's side. It's just a matter of scaling, and this is the problem. This is the problem right here, is the fact that literally Willow's just free firing. She's got full on Blast Flower stacks. I mean, she's just able to pin who she needs to, and Strix is able to cover. I mean, he's just in a good spot, too. And you see the rotations. You see the flutter was used to get out, and now they're just back. Now they're just free-firing. What do you What do you do later on in the game? Apparently Except just for, well, I, mean, I, I guess just that. I guess you just kill the sniper that's up there. I guess the axes are just too strong versus bullets. It's ferocity, right? So, yeah. I mean, unless he, unless he swapped later, then that could potentially be why that trade works. That Grover damage is not too – it's not so little that you can really ignore it. Vivian actually makes it into the back line, but that just means she's not with the rest of the fight. Overpower used. Did it connect? No, it looks like it missed. Do they want to spend more ultimates, though? The seismic crash comes in on the cart. They're actually going to be able to get rid of the Fury, but the Inflame is already present. It's already there. And because of that, they're able to at least win the fight. He's going to jump off the side. Make sure he doesn't actually get staggered at absolute Reign's leisure. And, of course, Yui and I believe it was the Grover. They're, they're just going to pretty much just back up. They're not going to try and pressure this a little bit too much, but he's going to be able to step forward, get a few shots, but nothing crazy. I was about to ask for the healing numbers, too, so thank you for bringing those up. 64K healing on the Grover. Less than you'd expect, but it is healing into a dead zone. Right. It is a pretty a lot of oh, damage. Man. A lot of low people, but they're playing far enough away, I think, where everyone's not getting healed all the time. You can already see the people mounting around. Fnatic's actually makes it into this little first floor area. Everybody stacks up here. Now Sorrowful's completely surrounded on point. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sorrowful gets thrown 
back, puts up the Siphon. He's got the res, though. But it's going to get rewound not, if he yeah, does. Yeah, he's just not going to use it. He's going to pretty much just sit there, not try and put on or take too, or bite off too much. And in this case, though, Yui actually is going to be able to get rid of Whitey. That's going to be really good for him. And they're still being able to push the car. Wildcard looks like he's going to go down next. Wow. And he is. And are we going to see a potential triple front line? Not triple, quad. sorry. Quad front line win. He just tossed Terminus off of the point. The Shadowfall put him too high. He went out of the contest range. Yo, I got to say, shout outs to Scarcity there. Right. We didn't, we yeah. didn't make note yeah, of it, yeah, but yeah, he yeah, connected yeah. all those axes on the Fae Flighting Willow on console. Yeah. That's not easy. That's really difficult. Also, this control that the has, I guess they don't really need a sniper when you have an Atlas, right? When he was being shown, when he Anna was Grover. just coming out now, people were saying, oh, yeah, Atlas is like a sniper tank hybrid, right? And then that thought process kind of fell off, but apparently it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's working so just well. fine for Cyclone. Uh, can we actually see the items? I'm genuinely curious to just to see what. Okay, well, so Strix has the caught too, and while Cotter and Whitey still both have a record too. And uh, uh, what's no up? resil Three, for Sorrowful two, is going to make things one. difficult. Yeah, I I agree with that. I you agree with that. You need Brazil to be able to res at all, right? Against an Atlas, if you get Brazil three, you can kind of get away from it. Uh, Brazil two, depending on how I guess how quickly you get set back as soon as you're up, but not having that is going to make things significantly harder. That ultimate is basically moot. It's going to zone for like a few seconds and that's it. Yeah, I mean they're going to open fire on Sorrowful though. No walkouts over there. Actually misses the overpower just by an inch right there. The whirlwind actually come in to keep everybody alive around that point, but scarcity. It's just going to get picked off, and this is the problem. This is it. This is the problem with quad for front line. Wreckers online, and you got a free firing Vivian just in the back line. 27% to 27%. And you got comeback mechanic available as well. I I I, I mean, I I don't know what else yeah. to say. I, I, it's literally, I mean, the game just shows itself at this point. There's, it's very going to be tough for them to push through this. Now they need to find a pick early with those hooks. Those hooks can't miss. They can't afford to miss right. any of that. Exile coming in to buy some time, but you know, no matter who you exile, there's just so much damage. It's not enough yep. to keep Luke alive. The next will get this last touch, but who's going to get on it again? Everyone's too far away. Maybe Yui, but you're not going to live very long against all that record. Yeah, I mean, one to two already. That comeback mechanic is a little bit too strong right there. He's going to be able to make it back to his team, make sure that he is a okay. And I, I, I mean, two minutes and 15 seconds left. They don't have any ultimates up on Cyclone's side. But I, I is there is there any way they can fight back against this curse, like at all? They have to connect the hooks at the right times because there was a t there was a moment earlier where where King's Doe went for a hook onto the Willow. If it had connected, that's a lot of damage off the table. But it didn't. Now, Big Fight actually tried to come out to save Wildcard. It sounded like, but it wasn't it wasn't in time. Siphon actually coming in to go for Whitey here, keeping him alive. Oh. Now that it's gone, Seismic Crash is going to come in to find something else. Good Seismic Crash. They're going to be able to capitalize on Whitey right there. He could be able to take care of that Vivian. Now just in the back line on Strix as well. But he hasn't realized it yet, but now he's able to turn the battle shot and give himself immunity. And Kings actually gets the hook onto the Furia. Not going to be able to get the kill. They are going to be able to take care of Terminus, though. The res comes out, but literally Anara just eats it. He just gets rewound immediately, yeah. and they take care of him two times in a row. Yeah, you got to get resilience, Term. There's, I don't think there's any way around it, especially against an Atlas. Great shot by Thanatis. Can he keep shooting down this well from the sky? It's tough. So much mobility, but... Was barely kind of get away. The DR keeping her alive through that Grover axe. And she walks out too. Cyclone though didn't lose anybody for that pressure that they looked up for. Sorrowful now gets dismounted and it's a pretty solid zone here in this low ground. But Inflame comes in and they're trying they're trying to find a kill right now. Yeah, they are. But the commander's grab actually goes out right there. She bounces his head right up on top of that window or uh, right. right on top of that excuse me door frame right there. He's not going to be able to be thrown back or behind. He's a little bit too big to be able to be doing that. Shell Shield goes down, but gets broken immediately. The hook goes out. But, I mean, you can't really do much of anything except for get a kill on Furia. And Nara's in the back line, still able to do what she can, but she's just going to end up getting staggered out. Trading with the Furia is going to make this defense a little bit easier, though. No sustain for that team. Going to move forward. Scarcity does not make it onto the high ground. 140k healing after this time is not bad. The nine minutes. Still, you normally want like about 10k healing a minute. So now that we're hitting nine with 140, that's about 50k more than you'd want. So pretty solid. To be expected, I'd say, from quad tank rover. Positioning very tough. Gonna be tough, I think, for them to burn through, especially with this split. Will actually manages to find the con a little bit isolated and they managed to force out the ancient rage with a just with a crush. Yeah, he's just swinging for the fences right now. Gets blocked for a little bit, but the terminus gets rewound right there. They're gonna try and focus him down. But Kings just gets burned, man. I mean, what else can you say? The overtime is a factor now. 
you're pushing in, you're looking to push in the payload of your absolute rain. You're just looking for a chance to defend at this point. You get the overpower, you throw terminus off the side, but at what cost? What did it cost? Well, at least they have they have so many tanks that they, they can constantly contest the point and keep it cycling. They just have to find and pick enough. Hook has to connect. Yeah. Kings, I, I haven't seen him connect a hook but in a while. And he you? just goes. He didn't go for it. He didn't have. He didn't give himself the chance really. They finally contest the objective. Find a kill. Tapsy gets caught in, but just has a dash to get out. Too far away for the tanks to kill. Luke runs out of DR. Can whoa, but he's too close to the card. It might oh, just go down. Man. And he burns away. He just gets burned. Blast flower combined with the terminus swinging. Combined with just targets, focusing him down, are able to be able to get those kills. Flex, Flexi actually gets body blocked for a little bit by scarcity. They're checking out the axes while he was invisible. He gets healed pretty much back to full. And that is so difficult. That is rough. Makoa is still on point, though. Flexi's still on the side as well. They get rid of him. Now they got a good hook onto the terminus. And I mean, three to one. I... How do you contest? How do you capture that payload at that point once you're in that yeah. one person stagger mode, right? Right. Just because. It was, oh wow, this is a fantastic angle of that seismic crash from yep. catching Whitey going down there. Tapsy tries to make it away, but can't in the end. But yeah, how do you, as, as a team that's pushing, that ride is almost as long as Ice Mines, mm -hmm. I, I think, going from one side to the other. I don't think you can possibly contest that when it's quad tank on the other side. Every single member of that team right. is good at contesting the payload in a desperate situation. They all have something that will be able to deal with it. The Nanix has his rewind, Kings has the shield, Yui has the shout. Even just that moment of shout. Is Four, enough to help. Three, Zilla's record coming online. Sorful still doesn't have resilience. If you have enough credits to buy Rizal one, but gonna forego it this time, still gonna be <coughs> potentially threatened by the Atlas. So the revive basically isn't there. More ultimates. I think ultimates are a little bit closer for Cyclone, but absolutely we do have the Sentinels and the Revive. We'll have to see how this fight goes. Turn trading on point early, but nothing just yet. Yeah, they're gonna be able to at least get they're gonna be able to at least get nine percent on the point for Cyclone, eleven for Absolute Rain. Terminus has that revive, but why he's sort of getting zoned by Yui right here? I mean, they get rid of the Terminus, but he's gonna be able to rest. Gonna keep himself alive. Thirty-nine percent for him, but they got rid of Whitey on the side. You got the you got the seismic crash as well. You're literally getting hit from all different angles, and that's so I I can't say hard to deal because it's it's quad frontline at this point. I would have expected that you'd be able to at least deal with it, but Cyclone are just doing it too well. Yeah, Fnatic's actually getting decent poke on a wild card stuck here on the side. If they can stagger him out, this is actually huge. Kings is now pushing for it, but look at all the people up top. He's actually 150 HP and goes down to the die from the Willow. They didn't have oh, the no. to clean it up, and Luke doesn't get away in time. Set back on the term. We'll actually buy them a little bit more time on this capture, but the health bars are just draining right now for Cyclone. Yeah, 78 to 58. And, and just Fnatic gets a lot of damage right there. Thanks to the Willow, he's going to be able to go down. But this is this is the problem. You just see the bullets coming in from off screen, just literally hitting you, uh, hitting Yui on the side. Do, what can you do? You get stunned by the power strike. You try to self spin. He's gonna have to. Oh, they're gonna have to focus down this terminus. But Dezo gets dropped immediately on point, so you can't do anything. What can you do in this scenario? as this quad frontline. This is also a great example of why Leviathan is completely meta, because even in quad frontline, even when you need that shield, I'd rather be CC immune when, when I'm using my Ancient Rage. You can tell. It, on the way into the point, he could have used it early and walked straight through all that CC, but instead he burned it. I, I'm amazed he managed to, to get away with it, honestly. Resilience 3 going to have to be a buy, I think, pretty soon for that Makoa. Otherwise, that ultimate is going to be a little bit too easy to counter. Absolute rain though. Now setting up for this, they need to take different angles if they want. And, and okay, he did. Sorful didn't go resilience. He bought caught instead. But Kings is actually going for the for the resilience. He does have it. Kind of surprised he's not going caught or or. I was about to say yeah, but there's no reason to go record. Surprised that there's no caught coming from him. It still could. Definitely prioritizing the Chronos to have more shields out. Good aggression from the tanks here, and actually the package out Whitey. Whitey could have been on the high ground, but was okay. playing on the low to have a different angle. Yeah, I mean, they got rid of him. Got rid of one of the DPSs. A good hook on Determinus It's going to leave him dead. And a good charge shot from Thanatix is going to leave their healer dead. And Strix is just in the back, just trying to fire from a safe distance. But, I mean, you got Kings just already pressuring him. You get the hook, but, I mean... I'm just amazed I, I he hit that hook and missed, like, four <laughs> point-blank right. hooks. That hook was so out of frame it couldn't even come into the room because he was getting pulled against the geometry of the wall. The term actually gets hooked, and that's a huge counter note we haven't been seeing too much. Has to shatter, fall out. That means that the main focus of his build, since he's running Crush, is not not usable for the next 10 seconds. Right, I mean, the siphon goes up just to eat shots from Fanatics. And, and, and I, I don't know, man. I mean, they're holding up the power siphon. They're really trying to 
they're, they're really trying to find their opening. And this is different than what I typically see on Terminus in terms of build. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about this? I wish I could. That's a very strange build. It's focused on mm -hmm. swinging, and I guess maybe they thought it would be super valuable against Quad Tank. And it seems to be with this. Uh, running this build on Timber Mill is a gamble. Yeah. Uh, Timber Mill is this wide open map where you're never going to be close to people, and running all axe focused stuff is kind of crazy. It follows one. I'm not sure if that's really worth it either, but right now actually Wildcard gets oh, hooked and pulled in. Finally, these hooks connecting is really what Cyclone needs. A seismic crash comes out as well and hits Whitey and the Terminus. I mean, they're able to get those kills. Now they're pretty much able to slowly walk down Fluxy, slowly walk down Tabzy. I mean, they're they're just being able to to, to just fight back. I mean, it's on. This is where I, I I believe personally, and you can and you can go off of this if if you can, Krezna, mm -hmm. is that this is where triple front, uh, not triple. I keep saying triple because I'm so used to seeing triple, but it's quad, quad front line shines. It's on these defensive pushes. They're doing really well with this, and the spawn's close enough to where they could be able to get back and continue that fight. But it's this point capture, this mid fight. Once people start scaling, that is so difficult for them to be able to capture the point. If they can connect their execution abilities, mm -hmm. I consider hook to be one. Right. Right. Hit these hooks on the DPS. Hit these overpowers on the DPS. If they can just do that, this will be significantly easier for them. But they just haven't had much luck with it quite yet. Mm -hmm. They have decent damage from the netics and scarcity, but that's all they can really rely on. Right. Five. Have to see how this mid fight goes. Maybe they could just Three, forego the point, two, play aggressively one. on the sides, and see what else they can do. And smart buy by Kings, by the way. He does pick up the Rizil 3, as I said. So now Leviathan, maybe not as important of a factor. He's going to be stunned for a, a, a microsecond yeah. every single time anything hits him at this point. Let's see how forward they go. And Luke tries to contest point, but immediately knocked down to half HP. They stop here on the side. I think they just need to keep going. They have to get onto these back lines, but they're yep. stopping and letting them do the work they need to. The Divider goes up. I guess they're just trying to focus down Terminus, but. I, I mean, I agree with you, Crescent. They should have been able to try and put pressure onto their back line. And in situations like this, you keep falling short, literally. And you drag in the Terminus. He uses the res. He zones the rest of you out. And Willow is able to do this. Free fire. So is the Vivian. Look at her walking up. Free fire. I mean, what? What? Like, that's all I can say. What? Yeah, what do you do? I think there's there's merit to, the, to this composition if they play it correctly. And they are... They're not. They're, right. they're not. They need to be going in and forcing something. You cannot sustain against the comp that Absolute Rain is drafted, and they're playing in a little room against all this AOE cleave. They have to change something, and they must know what it is. This is a team that's been super dominant in right. this region, I would say. And yet here they are uh, doing these kind of plays, losing scarcity here. No heals now for the team going to sustain them. Let's see how they push this hook. Missed up top. Sorrowful still able to sustain for a while. Has no siphon, but able to kite through the shots. Even with the Natics here, blocks that very last blast. But does not get set back. Back up to the top. Two minutes are still available on the clock. A headshot directly on the Willow is going to leave her dead. He's going to get the last hit, though. And, I mean, you've just got a situation where you... <laughs> I, I, I mean, a Cyclone got to be able to recognize what it is that you're saying, Kresnik. It, it, it's just the fact that you need to be able to get onto those back lines and stop them because they're doing this. I, and I, that's I mean, not to say that it's easy. Right, right, right. Here's of course, the thing. of course, they of course. Dismounted. They were not dismounted. They right. dismounted to stop in that room. Sitting in that room was the play that they decided to make. They could have kept mounting through, maybe try to get onto somebody, drew some, drew some fire and found a pick, but that was not the choice they decided to make. Whitey now in the back line should go down, but the axis. Yeah. DR plus everything, not enough to burn through. Whitey finds two, but Luke actually trades two back, so even back and forth right now, but absolutely have a much longer way to mount to get back into the fight. Yeah, I mean, this Terminus is literally just running at the Makoa. The wall goes up to, good, to just a block the shots to make sure Makoa still does not go down. His shell shield was already used, so he wouldn't have, wouldn't have had any other way to defend himself. This is the overpower, though. And 60 seconds uh, left, too. Yeah, I mean, that's... This is... I mean, this is rough for Cyclone, for sure. For I mean, sure. They've, got, they've got three other ultimates that are up. Hopefully they can recognize it coming into this next round. But, I mean, they... They were able to get two kills towards the end, which is good, like, currently right now. But... It's it's going to come down to this. Literally, it's going to come down to the last point, last round. And they they're using their alts again too. They just used seismic crash. They used they missed overpower earlier, which means they'll have it again because of the miss. It actually would have been worse if they connected it, to be honest. So that missing is more or less a godsend for them at this point. Sorrowful waiting on mount there. I still don't think that they have a great way to touch. He doesn't have resilience, so there's no countering the setback. Yeah. He he won't be able to 
go in for Yes, Arful. Went Haven 3 instead, which, I mean, it, it's smart to do that, I think, against this comp, because they have so little damage that you'll be able to live even longer. Right. But no resilience makes him super, super weak to the Atlas, and at this point, they're just bullying in the back line, trying to make something happen. They do get the contest on point, but it is wild card, and going down for it, I think this is going to be a quick turn, and yeah. we're going to go to a final mid fight more than likely. Yeah, Kings gets picked off. I mean, so does Yui. You just see the kills just pop up all over the place, but they got rid of the ones on point, so that's not going to be converted into anything. Just closing out this round into the final mid fight. And I mean, yeah, I mean, I feel like we've harped on it like enough, but it, it's just the fact that they need to, they, they got to stop these back lines. Hopefully this time around they'll do it. As long as they don't do exactly what they did last mid, it'll Which be is, better. Okay, yeah. Which is stop in a room that the Willow's staring at. Right. And huddle. Like, all right, guys, we made it. What's the plan? <laughs> We're already dead. That, that's that's the one thing they, they really have to avoid. Tons of damage on the other side, but that's to be expected considering this composition. So much wrecker. Master Riding now picked up for Sorrowful to be able to contest the point a little bit earlier, but actually Master Riding on the back lines too is going to make this pretty tough. It honestly has to be like Luke, Yeah. if anything, going in to pressure that back line because he's the only one with the Master Riding. Looks like he might... Okay, I was about to say, if he goes point, I'm mm. going to have an aneurysm. Okay. I, th th that would have been the, the worst possible thing and potentially could have pushed down that willow, but he drops to the point, has the wall, but it's not going to last very long there they against go. them. Now they're bullying the back line. This is there exactly they what they had to do from uh -oh. round one, and they have no idea. Uh-oh, you're stuck in the back line. You're actually able to keep them all the way back there. Use the inflame to try and peel for yourself, but it's not going to be enough. He got stunned literally for a microsecond, as you phrased it, Kresnik. 54% to 15 and they're able to get the damage. They're able to put out more than I believe it is Absolute Rain are able to handle. Termis has the res, but it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Exactly. He'll use it, and then he will get immediately set back if the Nemex is ready for it. And he is. And whoop. And no resilience means he can't live, so Pop. he'll go down immediately. Yeah. Now that Makoa has the, the means to contest the point, they have Exile to fight these DPSs, but they are all back and they're all hiding. He's firing them, could have saved the charges, doesn't have them. He does still have second chance. He's used rage. on the point, but what can he find with it? Nice. He's trying to make sure that he can zone out wider, at least make sure they can get the kill. They do. He actually rewound Fluxy in the back. The Natics did in that case. 84% to 18. And now I believe Cyclone will be able to possibly win this game. A good hook onto Sorrowful is going to send him, put him in a bad spot. He got the seismic crash on the back line. They want to take care of that healer. No sustainability available for Sorrowful. You've got 96%. You've got 99%. you have got an overtime. But I believe that's the game for Cyclone. Put him off quad front line. That is something I didn't expect to say today. Yeah, I mean, it was, the combat ended up working out at the end as soon as they realized. I can't believe it took them that long to realize mm -hmm. that, that they just needed to walk at them. They, they know that these sustained fights are never going to go their way against the comp that the other team had. So they finally do decide to go for the back line. Immediately it works. And, and both of the things they pointed out that I thought would be key, their aggression had to come out, and it did. And the other thing that had to come out was resilience on the term. Mm -hmm. And it didn't. And he immediately got forced out, immediately you, melted. Would you potentially, like, we can see it in the, in the slash lines here as yeah. well, just to be able to just be able to harp on that a little bit. But would you have tried, I mean, the Haven was important. That much is true. But would you have opted to go Rezo first to stop Fnatic's as Atlas? Is it that uh, is, is it that important? He's the only frontliner. Do you think yeah. it's that important to be able to? I think just maybe stop I would have gone at second. Right. Okay. Okay. Maybe I would have had one bad revive, but we should be winning those late fights, and that'll right. give us even more of an edge. One also point out, shout out to Scarcity had three hundred thousand healing. Yeah. I don't think that's too shocking considering the composition he was alive for, but. Still, in the end, Cycle managed to make it work. Gotta say, though, Luke flexing onto that yeah. onto that main tank three games in a row. I think performing pretty well. Yeah, 16, 11, and 19. Definitely good slash lines for him, but it was quad D I mean, not quad DPS. It was quad front line. We've seen quad DPS we more have. than quad front line. Yeah, that's true. That's a very, very true statement, but Cycle were able to actually just make it work. They were able to realize in the very, very last go around what they need to do, how they need to, to adapt, and they just went into the back line finally and were able to... They Literally, you saw Absolute Rain's composition just fall apart when they did that. Yeah, as soon as they got into those roofs, it was really tough. And, I mean, that's what they had to do because they weren't hitting those solid mid-range hooks and overpowers. That was the only answer. Right. I mean, yes, maybe they could have played for the hooks and the executes, right? If they were hitting them, that could have been a win a win condition, but they weren't. They, they had right. to go on something more reliable, which is just, we have more health than you. Mm -hmm. Let's just walk at you. Yeah. And they, they didn't see them coming, and that's what turned it in the end. Yeah, I mean, Makoa, I mean, you got the Makoa, you got you got both power frontliners. You've got two more frontliners on top of that. 
I mean, it's a little bit too much for anyone to be able to handle not just Absolute Rain, but a good match is coming off from Cyclone 3-0 against Absolute Rain. Very, very strong for them. We're going to throw it back to the desk and get their thoughts. A lot of big, big numbers, folks. Mm -hmm. I think not only is that one of the few times, if ever, I've seen over 300,000 healing in a pro-level game, but over 100,000 Terminus damage, too. That's yeah. uh, that's definitely something. Uh, definitely yeah. an interesting one here between Cyclone Gaming and Absolute Rain. Uh, that was, again, that was the composition to win that Timber Mill right. game from Absolute Rain. But just, I yeah. think Cyclone being the better team ekes it out. I think, uh, you know, you look at the numbers, and that's like a, a stat padding game, oh, yeah. I think, for, for a lot of people. 20, you know, 22-plus minutes for Paladins. Pretty long length. I mean, that, that, that's probably pushing the longest you can get. I mean, there was, what, 2-0, cap, defend, whatever it was. Right. It was basically almost as long as you can get. Absurd, though. I think maybe one of only a couple of times I've seen 300,000 healing. Um, and I, I agree. I mean, if you look at the way that, that Cyclone played, I think, you know, a little bit of fun there towards the end, maybe why it's that close. But I think that it takes a very good team to be able to pull off something like a, a quad front line. So, you know, it's not as – knockdown drag out as maybe you expect against yeah. absolute rain but i think that Cy cyclone still showed today that even in some of these weird kind of try new things compositions they're good enough to win these matches and i'm excited to see what they bring to the uh, the console wars well guys that does it for eu xbox let's head to the final standings for phase two it's all said and done 10 and 2 for Cyclone is where they will sit. 8 and 4 for Vroom Vroom. 5 and 7. 1 and 7 for Bust Down and Absolute Rain, respectively. 11 and 1 for Flashpoint. Slightly better there over in the EU PS4. Followed up quickly by Aaron Monner at 8 and 4. Mirrored by Stush at 4 and 8. And then 1 and 11 the rest of the way down for the boys of Ariel Arise. They did forfeit their game today, just as a side note. It does lock in the rest of Europe, guys. That concludes Europe. We do have, of course, the North American half of this broadcast. Yep. We are going to throw it to a quick little break, and when we come back, we'll be in NA. Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Paladins console league. 